Welcome back to our final segment on this championship edition of Ferris Sports Update. Time to talk Bulldog Volleyball and with us head coach Tia Brenda Wilhelm and coach first of all welcome back to the show. Thank you it's great to be here. I know it's been uh, several months uh, here since uh, your your season ended but uh, a great season for the Ferris State Bulldogs. Uh, just talk as you reflect back and and what it meant to, to win that conference championship, win the GLIAC tournament as well last fall. Yeah, I think that was that was the exciting part is we, we were able to win the conference and the conference tournament, which Ferris had never done before. So, you know, to have that kind of consistency to the season and still be able to, you know, do that at tournament time was really exciting. I know, certainly a great tradition for Ferris State Volleyball to the NCAA tournament 19 times, the 19th time coming last fall. Uh, yeah. What does that tradition mean uh, to be a part of Bulldog Volleyball? You know, it, and it is a tradition. It's something the alumni through the years have just been built on and, and made more and more a part of our program. So we really look to our alumni a lot for the standards and traditions that they've set for us. And, and as we, you know, go into every season, that's an expectation for us. It's something that we want to do. And we work, um, and we focus, I guess, on not just making that tournament, but being significant in the tournament too. I know you're one of the longest tenured coaches uh, here on staff oh, at Ferris State. Thank you for State. Me <laughs> that. <laughs> what, is, uh, what does it take to, to carry on that tradition, to have that success year in and year out, and, and continue to, to really build and develop and, and grow this program? Well, you have to have great players and great people on your team. You know, our team is filled with, with um, young women who are just, you know, so driven to be successful in, in, in all their areas, not just on the court and in the classroom, but also in their relationships. And they work so hard. Uh, you know, to build a strong team around the volleyball and, and the other areas, you know, they're in the community doing things. So, you, just, you know, you got to have great people on your team and, and great volleyball players. You have to have a great assistant coach because so much gets done. If you can have two people in there helping out, it's even better. And, you know, they're, that they're as committed and excited about what you're doing. Um, I think more and more through the years, strength and conditioning has become a big factor in, uh, in whether a team might not be why they win, but it certainly is the is how you get into that you know the chances of being a winning program, a winning team. And so we're fortunate to have some you know some people that help us a lot with that area and really makes a difference for us. So, but just being at a school like Ferris is, I mean you can't help but be successful because the whole university supports what you're doing and you know everyone community everything just comes out and you just want to do your best for your university and for your community and. It's just, you know, you can't help it at a place like this. The Bulldogs went 24 and 6 uh, last fall in 2014, uh, 13th time. You've won 20 or more matches. Uh, I know that's uh, not maybe one of the goals you set uh, when, when you start the year, but what are some of those goals that you really uh, lay out in front of the team uh, at the start of each season? You know, we're just trying to do our best always. I mean, trying to do the best we can. We're not um, super big on writing down a bunch of goals and that then just get posted and get dusty hanging on a wall somewhere. Um, we're really working to do our best and and we have standards that we're trying to reach and we feel if we reach those standards then success will come on the court um, for sure I mean we're working for to be successful every time we go out there on the court and um, but you know we know where we're going we know where our program is going we know what we're aiming for but we're really focused on each day getting a little bit better and doing our very best each day and being a great teammate each day. How does uh, winning the conference uh, championship in the regular season, winning the conference tournament, how do things like that uh, help in terms of recruiting and, and, and building and growing your, your brand and your program? You know, it's just, it's nice to win and I think that's, that's a nice thing for the recruits, but the recruits are really looking for the right place where they're gonna have the right kind of opportunities academically, um, where they're gonna have a campus that they feel good about and you know, be a part of a program that, you know, that works for them. So um, I don't think it's the make or break for what we do. It's nice that, you know, we are, have had a, a decent amount of success through the years. So, you know, I think that opens the door for us for some recruits, but they're just, they're just really looking for the best fit. And that sometimes involves winning, but most of the time the, the kids choose here because they love this campus and they love the professors that they'll have in their classes and they love being around the team. I know you kind of touched earlier on the community service uh, aspect of it. Uh, you had a, a great team in terms of academics uh, last fall, uh, an academic All-American. Uh, what do those types of things mean to you as a coach? Yeah, well, we had Dee Dowd as an academic All-American, but our team will also um, is most likely be an academic All-American team. So the whole team's GPA is really well. So they all are working hard to be good academically, and they're really proud of that. They really, it matters to them. But. Um, it's not like we set a goal of being an academic all-American team, 
but each individual, they're just trying to do their best in their classes and do well. And so they're really excited that their whole team has that mentality of uh, really trying to do well academically. Community service-wise, you know, our kids get out. Um, they, they do a variety of things. And um, less during the fall season, we do a little bit. We try to get into the schools a little bit and, you know, volunteer there. But during our winter semester, we spend a lot of time in, in a variety of areas in the community. So it's really fun to see them out there. And it's really fun to meet people as you're, uh, you know, walking in the grocery store or something and, and have them say, oh, you know, your volleyball players were here and they were helping us and it was just really great. I know that community support has returned. Uh, Ten and zero at home last fall, uh, and always playing in front of uh, a large fan base at the yeah. Everglades Sports Arena. Yeah, that is fantastic. You know, we love playing for our fans. They're so, you know, they're so enthusiastic. They're such a part of the game. You know, they're really loud and, and making lots of noise and filling the stands. And you know, we love that. We we hope to fill every seat in those bleachers every single home game next year. I know a great nucleus will be coming back uh, here in 2015, but a couple yeah. seniors uh, that you lost, Courtney Ream, Claire Graberg, uh, what did they mean as leaders for your program? Oh, they meant everything to us as leaders. We still miss them a lot. We still, you know, I, I, my kids that are going into their senior year, you know, they're always talking about those two and the leadership that they portrayed and how they're, you know, emulating them. And, you know, I just, I love that because we've had such great leaders through the years and each senior class really looks to the seniors that they had and you know just tries to take things from them and emulate them but you know Courtney was a, a a great leader just really held the team together and and just made things a lot of fun for us even in the moments of you know sometimes you know there's some hairy moments out there and even in the middle of that she would just make things fun and Claire was the one that just always kept us close I mean she was the one that made sure that all of our relationships were really strong and you know she just really did a lot for us so Definitely a big loss. I know football, men's basketball, men's tennis, as we've talked uh, yeah. here on the show of all one conference championships. Talk about that bond between student athletes, between teams, and, and how that helps uh, really the, the athletic department as a whole. I love any time another team wins because it just, it just makes it, you know, every game they win just makes the excitement grow within the athletic department. But our student athletes, you know, our SAC group is so strong. Um, and Claire Graubert was president of that this last year, which is exciting. But they do so many activities where they're involving all the different student athletes. And, and we try to, you know, make sure that we're out at as many games as we can as a team, not just that we're going there, but we're as a team and cheering and, and you know, making noise. And I see that amongst all the teams. I mean, you'll see, you'll see every team working hard to be at the other games and supporting the student athletes. I think our student athletes are really close. I think that makes us, you know, just a better place to be for sure. Well, Coach, congratulations again on winning Thank the GLIAC you. championship. And uh, I know uh, the fall season uh, coming up quickly and already looking yeah. forward to Bulldog Volleyball again. Thank you. That's going to do it for our final episode of Ferris Sports Update, this championship edition. Thanks for tuning in all season long. All right, here on the Bulldog Sports Network, a reminder you can follow all the action online at ferrisstatebulldogs.com.